Hi guys, um, today we're doing cauliflower. So I'm going to show you a few different ways to prepare it in the course of this video. Um, a couple of them are going to take a day of marination. So we're going to do the prep here first. I'm going to show you how to prepare the ones that we're going to marinate because we actually have to steam them first. The reason why we're going to steam this cauliflower first before we marinate it is that opens the pores of the vegetable, so to speak. Um, it softens the fibers. It allows the vegetable to actually absorb some of the flavors that we're going to be marinating it with. If you don't marinate it, what happens is whatever marinade you're using, whatever spices, whatever oils, whatever flavors, really only coat the outside. They don't absorb into the actual fibers of the vegetables. And then when you cook them, especially if you're roasting them under a high heat, one of which we're actually going to be growing. So that process is actually going to destroy a lot of the flavor. So you want your vegetables to absorb some of this flavor. And when you have high fiber, meaty vegetables like this, broccoli, cauliflower, aubergine, sometimes you need to steam them first, even sweet potatoes. Um, I used to do a sweet potato burger at one of the kitchens I cooked in and we would steam these sweet potatoes and then we would marinate them and then we would put them on the grill. So this way the whole of the vegetable absorbs that flavor and it's all the way through. Plus, you're also pre-cooking part of the vegetable. So this way you're not stuck with a main course or an accompaniment that's rock hard in the middle and burnt on the outside. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare this cauliflower. Now, I use all of my cauliflower, even this bit. I don't feed it to the rabbit. We don't have a rabbit. I don't feed it to farm animals. The peels and the hard bits of broccoli, cauliflower, and other vegetables are actually completely, totally usable in soups. There's no reason to throw them out. There's no reason to throw out your carrot peels, your parsnip peels, your potato peels, unless it's actually physically dirty, you can use them in a soup. You can freeze those peelings raw, put them in your freezer, save them, take them out at another time when you wanna make soup. So I'm very aware and a very conscious of the food waste that I produce in my own kitchen. And that's just habit. That's just something that as a chef, I've always been very, very aware of. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to get all these peels off. Now, some of the peels, obviously, if they look like they're brown or dry, so like this bit here, I'm not gonna use that in a soup. So I tend to use a smaller knife to get in here just because it's easier to control. And there's the bottom of your cauliflower. And what you wanna do is you wanna follow around that center piece cut in at an angle as if you were removing the stem part of a tomato um, this way you are actually digging out the hardest part of the cauliflower like i said that's totally usable for a soup 100 percent usable some people clean all of the stalk off so you can see that's a bit of a lumpy bit there I'm going to use that for the soup. I'll pick through these later, pick out the ones that aren't particularly suitable. Um, these little tender leaves on the inside are actually really nice. This is cauliflower. The leaves taste like cauliflower. The stalk tastes like cauliflower. Just because it's not the floret part of the vegetable doesn't mean it doesn't taste like cauliflower. So it's just a really good way to prevent food wastage. So I've still got a few bits and pieces in here. So I'm gonna go around again to dig this out. And if you lose a few bits like that, don't worry. I'm not too worried about it. So there you go. This, you can boil that in a soup and it'll be fine. So the two things that we're gonna do that we're gonna need to require steaming for, one is a roast and the other one's gonna be a cauliflower steak. So since 
I'm the only one who's going to be eating this roast. My partner doesn't like cauliflower. I'm going to cut it so it's just for me. Otherwise, I would actually cut this whole thing in half and use both halves as the roast. But I'm going to cut a steak off the bottom of it. So cut it across the middle like this. So you can see from the side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut again about a one inch thick on it. That's going to be my steak. And this is going to be my roast. So um, the steak I'm probably not going to roast. Ooh, it fell apart. Um, the steak I'm probably not going to roast as long as the roast part. The steak I'm probably only going to roast it for about, or I'm sorry, steam it for about five to ten minutes. So we're going to go ahead and steam these and then I'll show you the marinade that I use for both of these. There can be two different marinades. I'm going to do a Italian style one for the steak and I'm going to do a Moroccan style one for the head of the cauliflower. Now, while that's steaming, I'm just going to go ahead and chop these up. This I'm just going to roast, but I'm going to eventually put it in a soup. Now, I know I've discussed this before, and I've talked about the importance of not just boiling the crap out of your, video, your vegetables in a soup. When you roast any vegetable, it caramelizes it. It carbonizes the edges of the vegetable and gives it a much deeper flavor and um, it tends to sweeten up a lot of the vegetables it gives it a nice caramelized flavor to it so since i'm going to make this into a soup i don't want to steam these ahead of time that means if i steam it and then i roast it and then i put it in a soup i'm kind of playing a little bit of risky business with heating and cooling and heating and cooling so I'm just going to cut these up into small enough pieces that I'll be able to roast it. And again, with the issue about food waste. This is not a big deal in a soup, but if you're going to be using this on a plate as an accompaniment, I would recommend steaming this first and then putting it in the oven just prior to service, prior to serving your vegetables only because it has a nicer flavor to it. You can steam the vegetables and then serve them that way. That's perfectly fine. But I'm gonna serve it on the plate. Again, go ahead and cut probably about a half an inch off. That's perfectly fine as, a, as an accompaniment to a main. But remember, don't throw these away. Save it, you can use it in a soup later. So I'm just going to continue to cut these up so I can put them in the oven and roast them so I can make my soup. All right, so first of all, this is the cauliflower that we've steamed prior to marinating. Um, they're a little bit fiddly to handle, so just be very careful when you're lifting them into your pans. Um, we're going to keep these in the fridge overnight uh, while they marinate. So go ahead and put your marinades over them. The steak has the Italian marinade and the roast has the Moroccan marinade. Um, both of the recipes are down in the comments here below. Um, go ahead, like I said, marinate them in the fridge overnight. You can cook them straight away, but the flavor isn't gonna be as good as if you let it marinate. So next day, we're gonna be making our soup. Well, I'm gonna take the raw cauliflower and roast that off plain, no oil, nothing. I want it nice and caramelized on the edges. So that takes about 20 minutes. While that's going on, go ahead and chop your onion. Uh, don't worry about it being too fine because of course we're gonna blitz this soup. I use about a tablespoon of sunflower oil. Um, I find that with uh, vegetable sunflower oil just imparts a better flavor to it. A little bit lighter on the calories, so it's better for dieting. And um, I'm gonna cut up the stalky bits and the leaf bits here. 
I try to keep the pieces fairly small. That just means that they cook a little bit quicker. And we wanna do this on a medium high heat because we actually do want this to caramelize. We're gonna go ahead and put the lid on between stirring because that just recirculates the moisture and helps steam the vegetables as well as caramelize them at the same time. Uh, we really do want the edges to be fairly colored. Uh, we don't want them carbonized, but we do want a nice golden brown color on them. Uh, what we're gonna do is once it reaches that stage, we're gonna put our spice mixture on the vegetables, which again is down in the uh, comment section below. We do wanna return this to the heat, um, a medium low heat, because we want to heat the spices. That releases the oils and all the beautiful flavors. So once you get it incorporated, go ahead and put the lid on. Don't have your heat too high because then the spices will catch and they'll burn. Um, do that for about five or 10 minutes and then go ahead and add some boiling water and two tablespoons of marigold bouillon. I only use marigold bouillon because it is a really, really great product. Um, and it's, a, it's, it's just got a really high quality to it. So um, once your vegetables are boiling away and your cauliflower has come out of the oven, we're gonna add the cauliflower immediately into the soup. We don't want a variance in temperature. So your soup is at a boil, your cauliflower is just out of the oven. Go ahead and chuck that in the soup. Um, let it simmer for about five minutes just to incorporate it all together. And then we're gonna blitz it. Um, this soup is fairly thick, so if you wanted to let it down a bit with water or cream, um, feel free to go ahead and do that. You can also add um, chilies to the beginning process if you want the soup a little bit spicier. Um, this soup is actually really great with yogurt or sour cream. Um, that's our roast there. You can see it's got a beautiful color from the smoked paprika. Um, I'm gonna have that with the soup with uh, some couscous as an accompaniment. Um, another um, great thing to add to this soup if you wanna keep it vegan is you can add coconut milk. I would add coconut milk um, to it at this stage when you're blitzing it, because uh, you really don't wanna overheat your coconut milk too much. Um, you'll lose the flavor from it. So go ahead and blitz it. You can leave it as thick or as um, smooth as you like. I, like I said, like my spoons to stand up on the inside of the bowl of my soup. Um, I also tend to add oat cakes to my soup as well instead of using bread with it. I just crumble them up and add them into the soup to thicken them up. Um, this soup does freeze exceptionally well and even if you add uh, coconut milk to it or um, cream, it's a freeze as well. So we're going to grill our steak. Um, you want this grill to be a high heat, slightly smoky. You can do this in the oven grill, but I prefer to use my flat top. It's best to just get it on the grill and leave it on each side for about four minutes. Don't fiddle with it, don't move it around, just flip it once. As you can see, we've made three different things with that cauliflower. You can also, and this is another little hide the veg in the normal foods for the kids. What I used to do is I used to take the cauliflower florets and I would steam them and I would actually over steam them so they were really mushy. I would puree that down and I mixed it through my kids mashed potatoes and they didn't have a clue. Cauliflower is such a versatile vegetable. There are so many things that you can make. It's easy to come by. You can freeze it. And all of the calorie information for the three things that we've done today will be on the recipe information down below in the comment section. I'll also list all of that on the blog on the Discover Cooking webpage, which is at discovercooking.co.uk. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because then you will have alerts for next week's video. Next week, we're gonna be talking about lentils. And I know there's a little bit of confusion with lentils. Do I soak them? Do I not soak them? How do I cook them? Why are there so many? What can I use them for? So we'll be going over about three lentils in next week's video. So go ahead and leave any comments or questions you have about that, and I will try to answer them in the video. Otherwise, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next week when we're talking about lentils. See ya, bye.